Newgrange. It's one of the most iconic sites in all of Ireland. At more than 5,000 years old, this massive funerary and astronomical complex, predating the pyramids of Egypt, is one of the oldest of its kind found anywhere in the world. Like Stonehenge across the sea, Maze Howe up in Orkney, and countless other stone circles, megaliths and cairns that pinprick the landscape of Northern Europe, the central building here at Newgrange was precisely located with mathematical precision in mind in order to line up with the summer solstice, probably forming a focal point for celebrations carried out here. It wasn't just a sacred place to its builders either going on to remain a fixture on the landscape for thousands upon thousands of years. As new population groups and elites coming into the region claimed it as their own. Giving the place new meaning with each succeeding generation. Now in 2020, astonishing new revelations gained through DNA science are bringing this site and the ancient individuals buried here into the spotlight once more. Revealing evidence of one of the earliest yet discovered hierarchical societies in the world. An elite group wielding immense power. The God Kings of ancient Ireland. Let's take a look. Six thousand years ago, Ireland would be unrecognisable to a visitor from today. Vast old growth forests of oak, birch and alder coated the island with a thick blanket of green. Within ancient groves, by sacred springs, just a handful of hardy hunter-gatherers made a life here, living from the bounty of the forest. Then, by around 4000 BC, outsiders arrived. Travelling on primitive seagoing vessels, bringing astounding new technological innovations with them, along with great beasts of burden never before seen on the Emerald Isle. We know these people as the Neolithic farmers, and within just a few generations, the newcomers would revolutionise life on the island. DNA, as well as a wealth of other archaeological evidence, tells us that these newcomers had their roots on the far side of the world in Anatolia, what is now Turkey. And tellingly, as soon as they arrive in force, few fragments of the original hunter-gatherers of the region are found, either in material evidence or increasingly in DNA, absorbed by the inexorable march of progress. By around 3000 BC, the newcomers had firmly established themselves in Ireland. Hacking down forests, planting crops of wheat, barley and millet for the first time, and breeding cattle, sheep, pig on a wide scale. Animals native to the Middle East. Just like in Britain and mainland Europe, they also began stamping themselves on the landscape in the form of megalithic architecture. Construction projects involving hundreds or even thousands of people, ranging from colossal tombs and cursus monuments ranging for miles to smaller circles of stone and individual dolmens.
Academic debates have raged for decades as to the fate of the original Western hunter-gatherer inhabitants of this land. And now, DNA studies are enabling experts an entirely new angle to study these ancient people. One such study examining the remains of a number of individuals interred within the Great Mound at Newgrange and at other similar sites across Ireland have revealed definitively that megalithic tombs, in Ireland at least, were reserved by and large for people who were biologically closely related to one another. Potentially, prestigious groups of families who only married amongst themselves. This year, a team of experts unearthed a web of distant familial connections between an individual interred at Newgrange and other individuals from passage tombs across the country, including those at Carramore and Carrakeel in County Sligo. Genetically, Ireland's first farmers, or at least the highest echelons of their society interred in the tombs, were most closely related to peoples of the Atlantic facade in modern-day Spain and Portugal. Their ancestors over generations having traversed the Mediterranean from Anatolia to Iberia. weaving their way up what is now the French coast before making their way to Ireland by sea. Bringing pottery, agriculture and animal husbandry with them. A new age in their wake. The story isn't a simple one of conquest, however. Even though megalithic tombs probably only held high-status individuals, not all of the DNA comes from descendants of farmers from across the sea. Two individuals in a wedge tomb at Parknabinia in County Clare, for example, showed high levels of mesolithic hunter-gatherer ancestry, suggesting some amount of integration and mixing. Perhaps most interesting of all, however, is the approximately 5,000-year-old remains of an adult male from Newgrange. His remains laid out in a richly decorated recess of the inner chamber. This man, almost certainly an elite, high-status individual, was a product of inbreeding. His matrilineal and patrilineal DNA passed down from both parents being extremely similar. Not just cousins, but almost certainly father and daughter or brother and sister. Such direct evidence of incest is rare in history, almost always being taboo in wider societies. When it does occur, such as in ancient Egypt, various dynasties of rulers in the Americas, and even the kings and queens of medieval Europe, it is strictly within powerful dynasties. To their subjects, the possessors of divine status. God kings. This divine status could be both a blessing and a curse allowing relatively small kinship groups to maintain vast amounts of power over wide areas, such as can be seen with the megalithic architecture in Ireland or the pyramids of Egypt. However, it also separates this group from wider society even further. often preventing marriages with anyone outside this small elite group. Of course, unbeknownst to these divine dynasties, biologically speaking, inbreeding can cause all manner of defects and mutations, perhaps sometimes 
leading to their downfall. Remarkably, a local myth around the New Grange area, first recorded in the 11th century AD, tells of an ancient builder king who restarted the daily solar cycle by sleeping with his sister. Perhaps a coincidence, perhaps a half-remembered story from 4,000 years before. The God King of Newgrange was just one member of an extended familial group, buried at impressive stone monuments across Ireland. Only time will tell what more discoveries are unearthed, as DNA continues to be studied. You've been watching Archaeology News. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Tell me what you think in the comments, and I'll see you on the next one.